the overview on the agricultural machineries and my equipment, post harvest facilities, and other infrastructures. Here in DARFO 10 in Cagayan de Oro, um, the location of the office, but it is its scope is for the Northern Mindanao Region 10. So, So the DARFO 10 has the has a budget allocation of 792,158,000 intended for the machineries, equipment, facilities and infrastructures program. So this is for intended for the farmers here in region 10. So if it is divided to the agricultural machineries equipment and facility services, which is 185,528,000. And then the irrigation network services or the INS, which is 20,030,000. And then the farm to market load, which is the 582 million. So this is just for the FY 2021 General Appropriations Act. So every year there is a um, different budgets for the programs that is the Department of Agriculture is conducting. So this is just for the year 2021. So the agricultural machinery equipment facilities and infrastructures aims to increase the cropping intensity productivity due to the available irrigation water, provision of irrigation security during drought, potential for cost reduction. So in order to achieve this outcome, we have to have the farm production related machinery equipment to be distributed to our LGUs or to the associations or organizations and then we have the post-harvest equipment and machineries distributed and then post-harvest facilities constructed and then the SSIPs or the small-scale irrigation programs. So the impact of this project or the of this aim is to increase the shelf life of the perishable commodities and also to increase the farm productivity of the farmers income so this is the focus of the department of agriculture specifically for the agricultural machinery equipment facilities and infrastructure so our programs and projects projects are circulating on this outcome and for and to aim this outcome, we have to do the key deliverables or to conduct projects, programs in order to achieve this outcome. So the outline of this presentation is we have the agricultural machineries and equipment, and then we have the post-harvest facilities and other infra in Region 10. So in AME, or Agricultural Machineries and Equipment, we have this list of machineries. So this list of machineries are based on the requests or the letter of intents of the organiza organization, cooperatives, or associations. And then after them requesting those, we are going to propose this to the national level in order to have a budget for these projects. So specifically, we, um, we want the farmers to request on what they need so that we can address specifically what they need. So first is we have this mechanical weeder. So the estimated price of this mechanical weeder is 200,000 and also the requirement area for this is 30 hectares so this is intended for the rice program or the rice farmers so next is the power tiller or hand of um, hand tractor pool type so which also requires 30 hectares at the cost of 130,000 estimated price and then power tiller floating floating type we have here also 30 hectares of rice area 
and then it is estimated at 130,000 pesos. So we have the seed spreader fertilizer applicator, which is 30, also 30 hectares, which is 60,000 in estimated price. So we have the farm tractor, which is um, a mini type. So we have here 30 HP. So the requirement for this to avail is to the to have the far to the farmer to have a 50 hectares area. So the estimated price of this tractor is one million pesos. And then we have the precision direct seeder, which is a riding type. Which this is 50 hectare requirement at the price of two million. We have the transplanter walk behind and also precision seeder, which is 30 hectares at the requirement and 300,000 pesos and 24,000 pesos price respectively. So we have the pump and engine set, which has the area requirement of 50 hectares at the price of 100,000 pesos. So this these machineries are requested by our farmers that's why we that's the programs that are the machineries that we offer here in department of agriculture regional field office 10. so we have here the another for the rice program is the compact rice mill which is an electric type and then green collector mechanical thresher which has uh, which has the area of requirement of 50 hectares at the estimated price of 400,000, 200,000, and 100,000 re respectively. And so recirculating dryer has an area of requirement of 100 hectares because the recirculating dryer has a six ton capacity. So it can accommodate bigger area of farm so we um we encouraged farmers to use the recirculating dryer at a large scale so that the fuel that will will be used for the recirculating dryer will be enough or will be um used well so it is at this estimated price of three million pesos and we have the flatbed dryer which is eight hundred thousand and then we have the combined harvester and reaper which is which has the area of requirements of 150 hectares respectively at this estimated price of two million and two hundred thousand pesos we have we also have the rpc one two three so this is the rice processing center so their costs or their estimated price is 7 million 15 million or 30 million this, this depends on the area of the organization or the farmers association on what type of rpc will be awarded to them and we also have the mechanical dryer which has the area of requirements at 100 hectares at 3 million estimated price next we have the corn program so the corn program is intended for the corn farmers so in corn program it it also includes the cassava and the sorghum um, products so in corn program this focuses on the quality of corn that we are producing here in region 10 so since the corn program or the i mean the corn farm it requires large area and a very wide farm so our farm tractor is at the 90 hp or 94 power or a very big tractor so we have here has the area of 200 hectares and also has the estimated price of 3 million pesos so we also have the corn planter also has a area of requirement of 200 hectares at the estimated price of 1.5 million pesos so there are also many 
machineries under the corn program. So we have here the cassava cheaper, which has the area of requirement of 50 hectares, which has the estimated price of 150,000. So we have the combined harvester at 70 HP or horsepower, at has, which has the area of requirement of 200 hectares uh, at the estimated price of 3 mil million pesos. So we have here the corn meal, grain collector bagger, granulator or cassava granulator, cassava grater with presser. So this is a food grade machinery and hammer meal, Husker sheller, mechanical sheller, pump, and engine set, which has their area of requirements of 50 hectares. So their estimated price is, ranges around 400,000, 200,000, 250,000, 200,000, 300,000, 350,000, 250,000, and 150,000 for the said machineries and we also have the recirculating dryer which is bigger than the rice so we have the 12 tons recirculating dryer which is mobile it can be pulled and placed in a area uh, in a farm area through a tractor or using a tractor so we have here the area of requirements of 200 hectares at the estimated price of 3.5 million so we also offer the vacuum pack sealer cassava digger which has a capacity of two hectares per day so they both require 50 hectares of area at the same price 80,000 pesos so we also have the village type dryer at 10 tons so it requires 200 hectares of farm area and also it cost 4.5 million pesos so we also have the corn picker the silo which has an area requirement of 200 hectares which costs 3.5 million and 200,000 pesos so this is just a technical mistake or error so that is 200,000 pesos so we have also the cassava pulverizer, which has the area of requirements of 50 hectares at the price of 60,000 pesos. So these machineries are specifically requested by our corn farmers. So why is it so many people ask why corn is with the cassava? Because mostly of our farmers will plant first will plant corn and then if the corn will cost less they will choose to plant cassava so they cross crop their plants or their productions in a year depending on the decision of the farmer and also the price range of the commodity so we also have the hvc and also the organic agriculture or the high value crops and the organic agriculture program agricultural machineries and equipment minimum area requirements so we have here the mini four wheel drive tractor tractor so which has 30 horsepower so it only requires six hectares so it's, its estimated price is 1 million pesos. So we also have the biomass shredder, which has a price of 195,000. Knapsack sprayer at 2.5 or 2,500 pesos. So we also have the multi cultivator hand tractor, which requires three hectares of area of high value crops or organic agriculture so at the estimated price of 230,000 pesos so we also have the shredder mobile shredder at 150,000 pesos estimated price and also the power tiller or hand tractor pool type at three hectare requirements at 130,000 pesos estimated price. We also offer a coffee dehauler 
only a one hectare area requirement. So it's estimated price is 130,000 pesos only, not million. That is technical error again. And coffee depulper, which has also one hectare area requirement at 100,000 pesos estimated price. So in our livestock program, in the agricultural machineries and equipment offered is feed mixer, which costs 400,000. So we have the incubator, which accommodates 500 eggs at 50,000 pesos. Incubator that accommodates 1,000 eggs at 100,000 pesos. And a silage chopper at 300,000 pesos. So we also have the Saad and other agricultural machinery equipment. So these are the programs, other programs offered by the Department of Agriculture. So we have here the stripping machine for abaca. So we have 10 hectares area of requirements at the estimated price of 250,000 pesos and a decorticating machine for abaca, which is a mobile type at three hectares area requirements at 230,000 pesos estimated price. So this is to avail our agricultural machineries and equipment here in Department of Agriculture. So first you have to have a letter of intent Next is a board resolution from your cooperative association or organization. And then registration certificate either from SEC, CDA, DOLE, ARB, and RBO. So you, you also need to have a utilization proposal. So there is a provided template for this. So this will include on how you will uh, utilize the in the machineries that you will request or you want to avail. So also you need to have an endorsement from the municipal agriculture office, city agriculture office or provincial agriculture office. So this and we your cooperative association or organization needs to have a validation report from our technical staff here in Department of Agriculture, RFO 10. Once the, the requirements, other requirements is submitted to our office. So this is to subject for prioritization criteria. So if you are they, this will identify if you are qualified or not to avail the said machinery. So we have to also remember that the projects above 3 million pesos required a feasibility study. So the post-harvest facilities and other infra. So we have here the RICE program, which are the multi-purpose drying pavement, cold storage, and a warehouse. At the corn, um, corn program, the corn program offers a seed storage for the corn seeds. And then the high value crops has the offers nursery establishment and multi-commodity solar dryer. The livestock program offers forage nursery and the organic program offers vermicompost facility. So in rice program, this is an example of a multi-purpose drying pavement. So this is the specification of the MPDP or the multi-purpose drying pavement. So we have here 15 meters by 28 meters is the minimum specification um, at the six inches thickness. Um, they mentioned may vary based on the site location. So it, depend, it depends on the, um, the farm that the MPDP will be established. So the qualified beneficiary 
is a LGU or the Farmers Cooperative or Registered Association. That's why we are asking for those um, DOLE, ARB, RBO, SEC registration for us to identify if you are a Farmers Cooperative or a registered association. So this is the mandatory requirement to avail the MPDP. So we have the letter of intent, proof of ownership transferred to LGU, um, validation report, engineering plans and detailed design, quantity takeoff, estimates, and program of work to be signed and sealed by licensed agricultural engineer for RA 8559, also known as Agricultural Engineering Act of 1998. So the development cost of MPDP is around 500,000 pesos to 2 million pesos. So next we have the cold storage under the rice, the corn program. So we have here the specification of 18 meters by 20 meters by 7.5 meters height. So it includes two chambers of 8 meter by 10 meter cold storage with ramps and sidewalks with male and female comfort room. So this is the specification of a cold storage. So the same, the qualified beneficiary are the LGUs, Farmers Cooperative, and or registered association. So the mandatory requirements also of the same from the MPDP, which are the letter of intent, proof of ownership, validation report, and engineering plans and detailed designs, quantity takeoff, estimates, and program of work that is signed and sealed by a licensed agricultural engineer. So the development cost of a cold storage is around 10 million pesos. So next we have the warehouse. So this is, the picture shows an example of a warehouse. So the hair, warehouse has the area requirement of 15 meters by 17 meters and eight meters in height. This requires with podium and also a male and female comfort room. So the qualified beneficiaries also the same, the LGUs, Farmers Cooperative or Registered Association. So the mandatory requirements are also the same. So the development cost of a warehouse is 5 million pesos. So we have here the pro corn program, the infrastructure that offered offered by the corn program. We have here the cold, uh, the seed storage. This seed storage is, uh, the picture is located at Lumbia, Cagayan de Oro, owned by the, or the beneficiary is the Provincial Agriculture Office of Misamis Oriental or the PLGU Misamis Oriental. So, the area of a seed storage is 16 meters by 20 meters by 7.7 .7 meters in height with two chambers of 8 meters by 10 meters cold storage with ramps and sidewalks. So the same, the qualified beneficiaries to avail the seed storage are the LGUs, Farmers Cooperative, or Registered Association. So the mandatory requirements is also the same as the other infrastructures. So the development cost of a seed storage is around 10 million pesos. And so we have here the infrastructure for the high value crops program. We have here a nursery. So a nursery has the area of 15 meters by 18 meters and 3 meters height. So it has 50% shade net with metal framing. So the qualified beneficiary is the same as the other infrastructures and also the mandatory requirements is also the same. So the development cost of a nursery is 
500,000 pesos. So next is a multi-commodity solar dryer. So this is the, an example of a multi-commodity solar dryer. So the multi-commodity solar dryer has a area of 8 meters by 2.5 meters by 1.5 meters in height. So next is it has stainless framing enclosed with UV treated, treated plastic film. So the qualified beneficiaries and also the mandatory requirement of a multi-commodity solar dryer in order to avail this is also the same as the other infrastructure I have discussed before. So the development cost of a multi-commodity solar dryer is also 500,000 pesos. So next is the livestock program. So we have a forage nursery. So a, a forage nursery has a 15 meters and nine, by 9 meters by 3 meters height of area. And then it has a metal framing enclosed with P in net with 50% shade. So the same, the qualified beneficiary and also the mandatory requirement in order to avail the forage near city is the same as discussed before and also it has a development cost of 280,000 pesos. So we also have the organic program. The organic program offers Vermi facility. So the Vermi facility has a 5 by 5.5 meters by 3 meters by 2 0.7 meters in height of area and two sets of vermi bed with concrete flooring. So qualified beneficiary and also the mandatory requirement of a verm of availing the vermi facility is also the same as discussed before and the development cost of a vermi facility is 60,000 pesos. So that is about the um, about the infrastructure and machineries of the Department of Agriculture. I mean, overview of the infrastructure and machinery. Then we will proceed to the SSIP offered by the Department of Agriculture. So the overview of the SSIP or the Small Scale Irrigation Project or the SSIP's implementation of the Department of Agriculture Regional Field Office 10. So we have here the Small Water Impounding Project or the SWEEP, Small Farm Reservoir or the SFR, Small Diversion Dam or SDD, Spring Development or SD, Pump Irrigation Systems which are the Open Source or PISOS or the Groundwater Source or SDW or the Shallow Tube Well. So we also have the Alternative Power Source or Irrigation Systems like Ramp Pump, Solar Pump, Wind Pump, and Spring Development. So what is a small water impounding project? So an earth fill structure constructed across a narrow valley or depression that collects and stores rainfall and runoff during rainy season for productive use during dry season. So this is the water source used as water source for the farmers which, will, which experiences a dry season in a in a year or depending on the weather or the season that they are experiencing so this are the this is an example of a small water founding project which is located at the sultan naga dimapuro lanao del norte so we also have the pandanan small water impounding project 
here in Lanao del Norte. So, so the coverage area of a sweep or a small water impounding project is with at least has a 15 hectare service area. The qualified beneficiary or proponent for this are the registered farmers organization or group of at least 15 farmers who are willing to be organized. So the mandatory requirements of a sweep project is right of way agreement for the reservoir area, dam site, canal, access road, and other structures for new construction. So we have here topo topographic and engineering maps and engineering plans and detailed designs, quantity take of estimates and program of work to be signed and sealed also by a licensed agricultural engineer. And the same as the infrastructures requirement before. So the development cost of the sweep has a maximum amount of 300,000 per hectare of service area for the new construction and a maximum 200,000 pesos per hectare if of restored area for rehabilitation or improvement of sweep. So the small farm reservoirs are impounding and storage facilities with concrete or plastic as lining and protection of embankment. These are used to collect rainfall and run off for immediate and future agricultural use. So this is an example of a SFR which is located sa at Numiar, Malaybalay, Bukidnon. So the coverage area of a SFR must have at least 0 0.5 hectares production area per unit and the qualified beneficiaries or proponent is an individual farmer with at least 0 0.5 hectares of production area and for group of farmers with minimum of 2.5 hectare production area and have a common site of for SFR, they may provide with F SFR equivalent of five units. So the development cost for a SFR or small farm reservoir is has a maximum max maximum subsidy of fifty thousand pesos per unit and two hundred fifty thousand for aggregate of five units for new construction. A maximum of subsidy um, a maximum subsidy of two thousand twenty five thousand pesos per unit or 125,000 for aggregate of five units for rehabilitation of SFR. So the small diversion dams or SDD. So it is a concrete or rock fill structure with height of 0 0.5 to three meters designed to di divert portion of stream flow to point use. So the development cost of a SDD or a diversion dam has a maximum of 200,000 pesos per hectare of service area for new construction and a maximum of 100,000 per hectare of restored area for rehabilitation or improvement of SDD or the small diversion dam. So the coverage area of SDD we, is has at least service area of 15 hectares and the qualified beneficiaries or proponents are registered farmers organization examples visa or group of at least 15 farmers who are willing to be organized so the mandatory requirements to avail the small diversion dam is a the right of way agreement for canal and access roads and other structures for new construction, topographic and engineering maps, and engineering plans and detailed designs, quantity take-off estimates, and program of work to be signed and sealed 
by a licensed agricultural engineer as per Republic Act 8559, also known as Agricultural Engineering Act of 1998. So the shallow tube wells or the STWs, this consists of a tube of pipe vertically set into the ground at a depth of 6 to 20 meters with pipe diameter of 50 millimeters, 75 millimeters, and 100 millimeters. Design, it is designed to lift water from shallow aquifer for irrigation using pump and engine set. So the coverage area of a shallow tube well is at least one to three hectares production area within the shallow ground groundwater. So the qualified beneficiary or proponent are group of three to five farmers with a minimum of three hectares production area. So farmer associations, cooperatives, and other related organizations, and individual farmers with at least three hectare production area for rice, and individual farmer with at least one hectare production area for high value crops. So the counterpart scheme. So beneficiaries are responsible for the installation of their tube wells and operation and maintenance of their system. So the development cost of a shallow tube well is the total cost of pump and engine set for STW depends on the size and brand ranging from 30,000 to 100,000 pesos. The, co the cost of drilling and pipe ranges from 10,000 pesos to 30,000 pesos. So we also have the spring development. So the spr spring development consists of concrete storage tank or intake structure and PE pipes or concrete canals for distribution by gravity. So the coverage area of the spring development shall have at least 0 0.5 hectares for high value crops and one hectare for other crops per farmer. So the qualified beneficiary or proponent are group or is group of at least three farmers and with total production area of at least 1.5 hectares for high value crops and three hectares for rice and other crops. So the development cost of a spring development is at maximum of 200,000 pesos per hectare of service area. So this is an example of a spring development. This is located at Tungantungan, Valencia City, Bukidnon. So, pump irrigation system using renewable energy sources for prime movers. We have the alternative prime movers for pump irrigation system. This consists of pump and prime movers using renewable energy sources, storage tanks, and pipe distribution systems. In these systems, the water sources are already developed like river, lakes, and wells that requires energy to lift water to point of use. So these are the sources which are already available. So we only just need a prime mover for that source to, to be able to reach our farms or the area of production. So this include the hydraulic ram pump, solar pump, and wind pump. So we have here an example of a solar pump system for high value crops, which is located at Kalabugao in Pasugong, Bukidnon. So you can see here our director beside our SPIS. So the qualified beneficiaries or proponents of a pump irrigation system must have at least three farmers at minimum of three hectares irrigatable area for high value crops and a or 
and research centers for DA, LGUs, and SUCs. So this is an example of solar pump system for rice program, which is located at Lala Lanao del Norte. So the qualified beneficiaries or proponent of this is at least 15 farmers with minimum of 20 irrig irrigatable area of rice and rice uh, and research center of DA, LGUs, and SUCs. So we also have the Philippines Israel Solar Powered Fertigation Project. So what is a solar powered fertigation system or the SPFS? So the solar powered fertigation system or SPFS is capable of making a strategic contribution of the development of the Philippines agricultural sector, promoting food security and increasing farmers prosperity. The system is designed to dramatically increase crop yields while significantly cutting farmers' costs, thus meeting the policies and objectives of the Philippine government. So there are two types of solar powered fertigation systems or the SPFS, namely the SPFS-8 and SPFS-32, which can irrigate 8 and 32 hectares of service area respectively. So, as we can see, the SPFS 32 is larger than the SPFS 8. So, this is an example of the SPFS. So, the technical description of is SPFS. So, ver so this is um place between um side by side by spfs 32 and 8 so that we can identify the difference of the two spfs so we have here the service area which is eight hectares and the other one is 32 hectares at the spfs 32. the intake type is four inches shallow well and the other is eight inches shallow well the discharge rate is at 200 20 gallons per minute or 13.9 liters per second and also the other one is 650 gallons per minute or 41 liters per second we have this pump type which is the other one is at surface and other one is a submersible type of pump um, the pump power is around 3 to 6 kil kilowatts for the SPFS 8 and then the other one is greater than 15 kilowatts for the SPFS 32. The fertigation tank are both included for both of the types of SPFS and also the online monitoring and the satellite assisted agriculture are included for the to SPFS. So we have here the solar array power, which is 6 kilo, kilowatts for the SPFS 8 and then 24 kilowatts for the SPFS 32. The well development are 6 days for the 8 and 14 days for the 32 or the SPFS 32. The installation type of the two are four days and 10 days respectively and then the area covered for the solar shed are 29 square meters and 136 square meters so the qualified proponent or beneficiaries to avail the spfs must have at least three to five farmers with minimum of 5 to 8 hectares irrigable area for SPFS 8 and 32 hectares for SPFS 32 from research centers of DA, LGUs, and SUCs. So the counter 
part scheme of the SPFS are that the farmers to provide water source like well and the operation and maintenance of the system. So the LGU must assess first the water source if um, they, they must know if there is an existing shallow tube well also of the area. And by pump testing, the required discharge rate of 220 gallons per minute or 13.9 liters per second for SPFS8 and 650 gallons per minute or 41 liters per second for the SPFS32. SPFS32, so that is a technical error. So the annual physical target of the SPFS is stated here. By the year 2022, the number of SPFS or the Department of Agriculture aims to have 1,676 SPFS 8, 123 for SPFS 32. So, a total of 1,799 SPFS for both types. So, there's also a target for the 2023 and 2024, which will have the total of 8,382 SPFS 8 for the three years, and then 670. I mean, for the three years, 617 SPFS 32 for the three years, and the total of 8,999 after three years. So, by the year 32, we will focus on this 1,799 SPFS for both types. So, we also have the RAM pump system. So, the Department of Agriculture also offers the wind pump system, which has the coverage area of a developed existing dependable water sources, which has a qualified beneficiary or proponent with at least three farmers with min minimum of three hectares irrigable area. And research centers of DA and LGUs and SUCs. So the development cost of rum pump and wheat pump uh, has a maximum subsidy of 200,000 per hectare for solar and rum pump irrigation system for high value crops and a maximum subsidy of 200,000 per hectare for rum pump for rice and a 150,000 pesos per hectare for wind pump irrigation system for high value crops. So the counterpart scheme or the, the farmers or the beneficiary must provide a water source like well and also they must have a they will focus on the operation and maintenance of the system of course. So that is the end of the presentation for the irrigation. So we will proceed on the data that the Department of Agriculture for the Region 10. So, in Region 10, we have um, 91 ABEs or agricultural and biosystem engineers that are stationed at different LGUs. So we are on um, the BAFE or the Bureau of Agricultural and Fisheries Engineering aims to have um, AGENG or the agricultural engineers on each of the LGUs. So as of now, we have 40 ABEs in Bukidnon, 5 in Kamigin, 10 in Misamis Oriental, 
24 in Misamis Occidental and 12 in Lanao del Norte. That makes it 91 ABS. So hopefully this year, we, we, we can achieve, or next year, we can achieve a more than 100 of ABEs on each of the LGUs so that the in order to strengthen our agricultural engineering, um, like, um, I mean, the people that will focus on these projects, so we need to have many of ABEs on our LGUs. So also, we also have this new system, which is called the ABIMIS or the Agricultural and Biosystem Engineering Management Information System. So this ABIMIS is a Buffy in-house developed web-based information system that serves as the central data repository and monitoring tool of all agricultural and fisheries machinery and infrastructure projects of the Department of Agriculture. This helps accelerate the monitoring of projects, implementation from proposal, validation, procurement, construction, completion to operation. So this system, this will track the progress of each region by of each region on how it far it is on its achieving on its targets for the national scale. So this is the face of the abimis or this is how the abimis looks like. So hopefully the abimis will um, I mean, the interrelated agencies can access the ABIMIS soon because we are still currently um, putting data on this system. In this system, we will see the inventory or the ongoing projects of the region. So we can also he here, we can also see the ongoing and the progress of other regions. So, so the inventory of our as of now the inventory of our agricultural machineries registered in abimis reaches to 1800 uh, 1686 machineries this includes um the assort um different machineries like tractor corn sheller corn thresher so which to 1,686 machineries distributed to the region then the, for the different LGUs, um, proponents like organization, association, or organization. So we also have agricultural infrastructures constructed, which, uh, um, which reaches to five, 534 projects all over the region 10. So this composed of different FMRs, um, different SPIS, and different cold storage warehouse that are established in the region. For example, is a is the farm tractor or the four-wheel drive farm tractor. As of now, we have recorded or in recorded 135 farm tractor distributed all over the region 10. So this ranges from 2015 to 2020 because as of now, the 2021 are at the proposal and pre-implementation stage and also the procurement stage. So next we also have a 138 um corn shellers distributed to the farmers corn farmers all over the region so here we can also see um rice thresher 80 rice threshers distributed to the rice farmers from 2015 to 2020 and also we also have a the inventory for the infrastructure a total of 402 
um, infrastructures or FMRs are established in the region. So in this um, system, we can see here the POW or the current status of the project, which is indicated that the projects are already turned over, as we can see here in our image. So we also have the construction of seed storage. We constructed six seed storage located differently at Region 10. So we, oh, we have the PLGU MISOR, PLGU MISOC, the NMAC LRC. We have here the Rice Center for Upland Development. So here we can see in this data that the Region 10 has reached 1,600 87 machineries given to our farmers so hopefully that we can increase this as to distribution to our farmers and also we have here the 500 558 infrastructures given to the farmers uh, i mean given to the farmers organization research centers of da in region 10. So I think that's all for my slides. So thank you. So let's start with the first question. This is from Grace Nil, one of our Facebook Live viewer. So she is asking, po, most of your beneficiaries are farmers' organizations. Knowing that for some reason, most of our farmers' organizations or cooperatives do not sustainably work, do you cater to individual farmers' needs? Actually, the Department of Agriculture focuses on the farmers' organization and association to ensure the maximize efficiency of the machinery so that the machinery will be used by many so that it will not be monopolized by only one person or one um, specific individual. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for clearing that up. And yes, nga, um, uh, mas maganda or it's better if a lot of our farmers can really be, uh, can really use those machineries, no? Uh, and it's not monopolized by only one. So, yes, you do have a very good point. Po. So, next question this is from Derby Frias. Hi, engineer. Good afternoon. I don't know how to ask this question. Do you ev evaluate the performance of the cooperative and LGU in terms of the availments of the machineries and political influences? Second, does your office have the power to ask the LGU to come up with the initiative without the request of the farmers? I'm sharing this because not all are lucky to become a member in the association or co-op. Thank you. So as per for the first question, which is if it is influenced by political or the LGU, um, and, and also for if the LGU has the initiative, yeah. um, I think there is an initiative for the LGU because the LGU has these agricultural technicians um, specifically assigned to the areas of the, the specific areas of the provinces. So this, they will identify if this organization needs um, the machineries or they can also identify if they are qualified to avail this and push or to give a uh, um, suggestion or to give, um, I mean, give advices that the farmers can do, a, can create a cooperative or association so that they can avail the projects of the government. So I don't think that this is, this can be, um, influenced by the politicians or the political because. Um, before giving the projects to the specific organization or association, the technical staff of the region or the DARFO10 will validate the association if they are qualified 
to be given or to be awarded by the project. Okay, thank you so much for that, ma'am. Let's go to the next question. This is from, of course, from one of our faculty members. So, Sir Boy, Engineer Elenito Duran is asking a question. Since the bottom line goal of these programs is to help the farmers improve and or stabilize their production and net income, why is it that still many farmers do not know about these programs? Do you have an awareness action plan on these programs to the lowest farming communities? So, as I said before, there is ATs or the agricultural technicians that are assigned to those areas. So they are the one in charge to disseminate information on the projects of the Department of Agriculture. So I think the, these farmers, I, these agricultural technicians is, are under the LGUs, which are given incentives by the region in order for them to work well and identify those farmers that are in need, especially those farmers that really, really need improvement. I see. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, yes, I hope no, our ATs would also uh, no, um, really uh, reach out to all of our farmers so that they can be aware of these programs. And also, to our farmers, uh, please feel free and don't be shy to approach your ATs or your um, LG or MAO no, uh, uh, para, uh, to inquire about these programs then. Okay, so now let's move po to the next question. So this one's... Uh, what is the basis of the area requirement in accessing the agricultural machinery and equipment? So the basis of the area of requirement of the machinery is first the capacity of the machinery. And then the second is the simultation of the simulation of the um, the machineries on what um, how much per hour it can accommodate so that it will be used or utilized by the farmers efficiently. So it is based on the capacity and as well as the simulation of the machinery. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And now, uh, this is another question from Grace Nil, our Facebook uh, live viewer. As an agricultural campus, we at USTP Claveria needs agricultural machineries too. Can we avail of these machineries from your office? And uh, additionally, um, parang question din daw po, um, can private universities like Xavier <laughs> avail of these agri-machineries for academic purposes? If yes, how? So actually in our... Implementa uh, implementation, the universities and state universities are qualified to avail these machineries and programs only to them to just write a letter and to address to us the request that they want and also the requirements that we have stated before so that for them to, to be accommodated in our office. So, then after receiving the letter, then we will then um, validate for us to be to discuss if the university is qualified to avail such project. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. So to all of the um, universities and state universities that are watching, no, uh, that is a good news. So uh, kasama, pala ta, uh, kasama pala ang state use and universities na ped, sa mga pwedeng mag-avail of these programs. Now, let's go to the next question. What is the length of time of processing or, or processing time of application to turn over to the beneficiaries? So, the length, since this is a government agency, so the length of time from, um, let us start from the letter of intent. So, once received by the office, we, have, we are given two days to respond to the letters of intent of the um, what do we call this? Um, the requesters or the the one who send the intents, and then after that, um, they are scheduled to be validated. So the validation, since um the government and and gov a government office should should have a proposal to the national level, 
So it is um, estimated to have a year for those proposals to be accommodated because we still have to um, propose those projects to the national for the next year of implementation of the project. So it is not an assurance that you requested today and the next week you will be given the project instantly. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, very uh, understandable naman yung explanation. No? And it, it makes a lot of sense. So thank you so much for clearing that up. Po. Now let's go. Uh, this is a follow-up question from uh, Derby, Sir Derby Free. Yes. So follow-up question po, engineer. Sorry for, for the question. I'm close to one of the technicians. And when I presented the proposal, it seems that they don't have an idea and they refer it to their municipal agriculture office or municipal agri. Hope you can empower more of the technicians kay confused kaayo sila sa akong explanation. So, yun, parang more of a comment and ano lang daw. Um, yes, more of a comment than a question. Pero uh, if, you ca if you have anything to add sa sinabi po ni Sir Derby. So, actually, ma'am, we... Um, we already have the law, existing law, which is the Republic Act Number no. Ten Nine One Five, an act strengthening, modernizing, and aligning the practice of agricultural engineering in the country into the internationally recognized practice of agricultural and biosystems engineering and for other purposes. So the LGUs are required to hire an agricultural engineer in their um, LGU. So in this Republic Act, so it is stated there that the LGU should have an ABE there. So, so they should also know this information that regarding us the hiring of the ABE in their LGU. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. And hopefully, um, as we continue on no, or as these programs continue, more of our ATs would really be aware and uh, would also spread these uh, the awareness of these programs to more of our to our local farmers. So, yun. We can only hope for the best. So let's go to the next question. This is from Dan Dolls. Who will approve if the farmers' cooperative is qualified? Is it the LGU or the Department of Agriculture? Of course, the Department of Agriculture. We have the technical staff that will evaluate the qual the qualification of the um, the farmers' association. But it is a requirement, an endorsement from the Municipal Agriculture Office. The, that the Farmers Association is endorsed by them or that is um, qualified by them. But still, we have the decision on the qualifications of the Farmers Association. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, para klaro lang, uh, as what uh, Engineer Reggie have said, uh, the um, decision on the qualification of the Farmers Cooperative is with DA, but still uh, there is a need for an endorsement from the agriculture office of that uh, municipality or of that city. So thank you so much for that, Mal. Now let's go. Uh, this is a question from Vince Soy. Uh, DA personal lang ba pwede mag-access ng ABMIS? How about those ABEs working with LGUs and other NGAs in the country? How can we request for access in case we want database references? Thank you. So actually, the ABMIS is still ongoing project. So we are still putting details, inventories, and information of the system. So it is not yet um, fully fully established. So I I don't think na the the buffet will have the authority to give uh, the, the buffet will give authority to those um individual concerned individuals or groups that will request for the access of AB, ABMIS or ABMIS. 
So, I see. Okay. Um, how about um, meron po bang estimate on when uh, this can be comp- uh, or ABMS can be accessed now by others? And also, ma'am, um, do you have any other um, parang uh, other other way for them? If ever nga, kasi uh, as what Vince I have said for references. So, uh, if hindi pa sa ABMS, oh, where can they go to if they want to have or to have access for the references po ng kailangan nila? So, um, we will refer that to our future meetings to the national level on how they can address this issue. And as per accessing of the ABIME, so we cannot answer that because we are not the one who um, utilize the, ano, the system. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, now, let's go to the next question. Uh, what is the length of time of... Uh, no, tapos na plato, sorry. Okay, so this one. Can the former organization recommend their own design to support their specific needs? Actually, we are conducting the LGU consultation, which involves the um, LGUs from the different provinces. In this, we they have the say on what's the... Um, specifications that they want and what they they need of the farmers and then through that information that we have gathered then we will propose it to the national level since the national level is the only one who will say if it's okay or not okay thank you so much ma'am and that's good to hear na meron din palang um a consultation and the, with the LGUs and all those uh, farmer organizations no uh, now let's go to the next question. Okay, for these projects, the ones that you have mentioned earlier, po, how much is the equity cost of the applicant? So everything that the DA project offers to the farmers are all grants or they are for free. They don't have any monetary cost from the farmers, so they are all grants. Wow, that's very good to hear. So, um, so to all those, to all our farmers and uh, farmer cooperatives that are watching, you know, please do uh, try to take advantage of the of this opportunity. Because it's for free, na siya. So it and it it will really be a great help to to all of you. Now, uh, this is another question from Sir Derby Frias. Engineer, will you recommend a co-op for us? Kagibalibaran ko to join their co-op kay dato daw ko. I'm not going to mention name lang, ha? So, I think there are many existing co-ops around. So, maybe they can go to their LGUs and ask for information on what possible cooperatives that they can be able to join. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. So, yes, um, there are a lot of co-ops uh, na, na available din daw naman, sir. So, uh, maybe uh, recommendations from AP siguro uh, for uh, cooperatives na pwede maduulan. Now, uh, another question. Uh, what are the responsibilities of the beneficiaries over the turned over the turned over equipment or facility and then what are the penalties imposed to the recipient if the equipment or uh, are damaged within the economic life of the equip- of the equipment or infrastructure so the beneficiaries or proponents are in charge for the operation and maintenance of the equipment so in the mo- the memorandum of agreement of the said machineries, they are responsible for this, which makes them required to take care and give the maintenance of the machinery. If ever the machinery is um, destroyed or will not be functional within the lifespan of the machinery, so they have to um, repair the machinery at their own cost. However, if they fail to do this, then the cooperative will have the um, will be less in prioritization of the next projects of the Department of Agriculture. I see. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, and then it makes sense, of course, because if you fail to take care of those machineries or infrastructure that was granted to you, so um 
the the giver will really think about ano letting others naman have uh, that opportunity. Uh, in connection to this, ma'am, uh, somebody is asking then, will Raed assist the recipients in the after sales encountered problems of the machineries or during the maintenance and repair of the machinery and infrastructure? Yes, of course. We um there are many times that we are the one who will contact the supplier and also follow up the supplier if they already complied or repaired the said machinery. So, yes. Okay, thank you so much. And that's very good to hear. Uh, now, uh, let's go to another question. Okay. Since the construction and operation of these small-scale irrigation projects has environmental impacts, do you require environmental compliance certificate during application of SSIP? Yes, um, we require the ECC or the CMC from the from the VENR. VENR. Okay, I see. Thank you so much, ma'am. So that's clear for everyone uh, that would uh gustong uh, would like to avail of the SSIP. No, you have to secure some environmental compliance certificates. Then, now let's go to the next question. Uh, this is from. Grace Nil, what is your advice for individual farmers who do not want to be members of cooperatives or organizations to avoid complications and who would like to avail of the machineries? Can they avail of soft loans to get the machineries? Actually, in our rules and regulations, the farmers are required to be in an organization or association. So if they don't want to be members of the organization or association, the recipient from, uh, for example, we have given a farm tractor to a specific organization or association, this organization or association will have the, the farm tractor for rental. So they can still... Um, borrow or rent the said equipment, but they it will require um, a higher cost because the members will pay for the lower cost. Of course, it will have a cost for them in order to maintain the maintenance of the machinery. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Po. No. And uh, yes, because uh, really uh, nowadays, uh, government services and programs are really more um, tailored to cater to those who are members of farmer organizations. Because um, DA is really um, uh, recommending no, uh, clustering in our uh, farming sectors. So now let's go to the next question. Uh, ito po. What is the pumping test guidelines of RAED to ensure that the water source for the pump irrigation system is compliant to the project requirement? It is based on the target area of the said type of pump. So it, it will accommodate the um, area of the pro, uh, area of production of the okay, so type of computation of the crop water requirement. And also with the computation of the crop water requirement of the said farm. Okay. Thank you so much for that, ma'am. So I think uh, those are all of our questions. Yes, yes. Wait lang po. I'll check muna. <laughs> Okay, yes, those are all of our questions from our viewers. But of course, before we or before you say goodbye to them, we'd just like to ask for a message po to all of our viewers. Uh, as what was mentioned earlier, we have viewers from the academes. We also have viewers from the different LGUs and government agencies as well as from the private sector. So what uh, words of uh, inspiration or uh, can you um, share to them? Po? So in behalf of the RAED RFO10 and also the DA RFO10, I hope this information that you have gathered today will help um, disseminate the informations that we are, um, um, the projects that we are, are offering to the farmers and also to be an inspiration to other individuals to go for farming so that we have the masaganang ani, mataas na kita. So that's all. Thank mm -hmm. you.